Hey, I'm just here with Melissa. We just met the other day. Uh, we both did Jamie's uh, podcast for Studio 88. How are you feeling? You just did your weigh in. Yeah, I feel amazing now that I had some liquids in me and some food. I feel good, I feel strong. You know, so I'm so interested to talk to you because one of the main things that I was always interested to know is how do you get into the mindset before you get into the fight? Because I know as an actor, I do different things like meditations or breathing work. Um, yeah, so like for me, like on the, the weeks leading up to the fight, I'm like really mm. focused and like I'm thinking about the fight a lot and like just visualization and um, yeah, and then um, I, I have a mental coach, Jason Wong. He helps me with um, getting into the flow state. Okay. So um, he'll be helping me uh, this evening and like tomorrow. So what does that mean exactly? It just like it basically slows things down while you're in there. So it's like you're only focused on that one task at a time. Mm. So um, I've used him before in like his, uh, his way and it really has helped me. So yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I might cool. have to talk to him. Yeah, Maybe that'll help cool. me with yeah. my acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really, really get cool. you like hyper focused. I visualize myself winning for sure, but I don't think about that when I'm in the cage. Like in, when I'm in the cage, I just do what I need to do at the time. So you're just present. Yeah, just being present. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. Yeah. You're gonna have to give me some of those tips. Ce combat à Toronto, qu'est-ce que ça signifie pour toi? Ça signifie tout. En fait, les trainings que j'ai faites. Depuis que j'ai commencé il y a 4 ans, c'est je m'entraînais pour ça. Donc euh, demain euh, je vais tout donner puis ça signifie vraiment tout pour moi. Et qu'est-ce que tu connais de ton adversaire euh, je connais pas euh, beaucoup de choses. Je sais que c'est une striker. Mm -hmm. euh, elle a plus d'expérience que moi. Mm -hmm. euh, je sais qu'elle travaille vraiment fort donc euh, je pense qu'elle va tout donner demain. Euh, c'est ça. OK. So Claudia what did, can the audience expect from you tomorrow? Uh, une Claudia forte, agressive et confiante. Mm. Qui va tout donner. Mm -hmm. Super. Merci, Claudia. Making their way out to the PFC cage. This contest is scheduled for three rounds in the straw weight division, making her way out to the blue. and just, you know, south of amateur type smokers. And I'm watching her warm up here and she's been around already. Pro or no, pro fights or no pro fights, this is a real fighter. And her opponent making her way out to the red corner. Please welcome Melissa Carianis. Melissa Carianis, we know a bit about 
three and six, as mentioned in her career. Her nickname is Magic, and she can be that inside the cage. She opened up, we mentioned Robin, three and two. She's got the skills, but somewhere along the line, the rut started, and she hasn't been able to battle her way out of it yet. To her credit, though, she continues yes, the battle. Yes, and, and that you're absolutely right, that is to your credit. You know, hey, when things get tough, who are you? Do you quit and go, oh, well, that, been, that was cool, I used to fight, then I started losing? Or do you go, well, I'm gonna fight my way through it, I'm gonna take the tests, I'm gonna repair, I'm gonna relearn, I'm gonna make the adjustments necessary, I'm gonna reface it, I'm gonna be truthful with myself. I lost because of this error, or this mistake of mine, how do I improve it? That's who she is, that's also why she's so popular. There's a ton of people here who wanna see her fight, they've seen her at her best, and they've seen her come up short, and she keeps doing it, and that is something to respect. She debuted with a lot of fanfare because of the skill set. She's incredibly skilled. But at the same time, that can work two ways. If you rely too much on that and forget the heart, the battle, what it takes to be a fighter and just rely on, I can be flashy, I can be skillful, it can hurt you. She's but, gone back to the drawing board and it looks like she's ready to go. And expectations are weird, my friend. Like when people start getting really excited about you, they start writing articles, they start saying, oh man, we've seen this girl, she's amazing. Now all of a sudden you're going in with different meaning. In the end, all the fight is, is a contest against a skill set and a body type. That's it, come in here and express your combat in a skill set body type matchup with another human being. But when you start worrying about how many followers you have and how people judge you and what people expect of you and two wins from now we'll fight for a title or any of these things start getting in your head, they distract you from the mission. The mission is simple. That's a human being who's trained to fight you. They are a skill set and a body type. Go in and be free. Now Randy Field, who Melissa fought at PFC 12, is an incredibly talented fighter that has a very bright future, and that future is going to come quickly. And she took Randy to a unanimous decision. So we know what Melissa can do when she's on her game. The question is, can she get back on the roll? If she does, Robin, there's a whole lot of straw weights coming through the ranks that PFC could find to start working with her and getting into fights in the cage. Let's go back into the cage to Mr. Throda. UFC fight fans, the following girl fight is being brought to you by USG Canada, Sovereign Extracts, and Cool Kids Ice and Water. Scheduled for three rounds in a women's strawweight division, here are your fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black and red trunks. Standing five feet, five inches tall, she weighed in at 115.6 pounds. She's a kickboxing specialist representing Team Bergeron. She comes to the PFC cage for her professional debut fight tonight. Fighting out of and representing Actonville, Quebec, ladies and gentlemen, here is Claudia Barril. Yannick Bergeron is a legitimate striking coach. Her opponent across the cage fighting study. out of the red corner. Wearing the gray trunks. Standing five feet, four inches tall, she weighed in at 115.4 pounds. She's a Muay Thai specialist representing six MMA. She comes to the PFC cage with a record of three wins and six losses. Fighting out of and representing Toronto, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, here is Magic Melissa. Referee Ivan Spets with final fight instruction. Play as big as it was in the backstage. Fight hard by fight clean. But take us all times. Obey my command all the times. If you want to touch the gloves, do it now. Good luck. Claudia Barilla looks real and focused. Yeah. We talked a little bit about some of the history of Canadian contest. fighting, mixed martial arts, martial arts. Team Bergeron, Team Legion, uh, BTT Canada. Uh, TriStar, Quebec has a lot of that history, and so it's cool to have a Bergeron fighter here. Yeah, you talked about the OGs earlier in Canadian MMA, and we're right back up that alley again as Melissa Karyanis is wearing the multicolored trunks in the cage. It's Beryl in the white and black as Beryl takes the center of the cage and Karyanis is working on the outside. Beryl's elbows are flared, see that? So let's see if you start throwing body kicks and body punches. See how flared her elbows are? Once they're out like that, it gives you an angle to kick that body. Sometimes that's a bait. 
Now, it's a young fighter. I'd be surprised if it is a bait, but it can be. Somebody wants you to kick for to set a trap for you. Karianis is working around the outside, and she's working very slowly mm -hmm. here, Robin, trying to get her wits about her in the cage. This is a big fight for her. She wants this win. She's taking her time, looking for what she can find in Burrell's defenses to attack. We talked about maybe Burrell is baiting you into kicking her body to catch it, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Melissa <laughs> catches a kick. That's why, you know, judgment, sometimes we look and we go, oh, look, their hands are down. Or, you know, we have a, as humans, we have a typical desire, for, especially sitting on our couch and being entertained, to sometimes judge, think we know what we're seeing. Uh oh, their elbows are out, that's a mistake. Well, it might not be, it might be a bait. Might, your reaction to think it's a mistake makes you react pr um, predictably. Now you start kicking the body, which is what they wanted all along. That's why the judgment is something that they manipulate and take advantage of. Absolutely. Is Melissa backing Claudia up. Claudia drives forward. Dwayne Ludwig uh, did a seminar actually at Crew Jeff's place. Crew Jeff was just in uh, with Crew Joe. And um, Dwayne was like, we don't show any flaws unless we show them on purpose. Right? And that's what that's getting at is if we open, create an opening for you and you take it, you're, you taking it is you doing what I want from you. And then I, and then I counter you. Um, so it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Both of these two are downloading all that information about each other and making their catching, responding, kicking. And it's tough to do in fast motion like mm -hmm. this as we're approaching the halfway point of round one and both have taken a bit of that game playing approach around yep. the outside, showing some different angles, showing mm -hmm. some different stylistic maneuvers. And Burrell going back to that inside leg kick. Burrell on the exit came through with the right hand. So when she kicked, Melissa went to grab. When she responded, oh, that's a good, well-timed one backing up. Melissa then responded trying to punch, and then uh, and then Claudia punched her back. So it's a game. It's, it's a game of playing cards. And as you play them, you play a card in response to somebody else, but also to get a card from them. It's also a conversation. That kick is an opener. We're saying something. Now we're saying it again. Now we're, th now we're adding another word to the sentence. And Melissa now tries to interrupt that sentence. And we interrupt her back. It's just a conversation. It's a physical conversation. Well, I think Melissa tried to put the exclamation point on yeah. that conversation yeah. with a pair of right hands. Turn it up into a debate and then maybe ultimately an argument, right? <laughs> and that's the game. I love the way of thinking on that line. As a jab from Brill did jack the job of Melissa Karianis, but it doesn't seem to have bothered her all that much. She's still driving forward. Burrell staying calm to the outside. And whether whether those flared elbows or the bait are, are not, Robin, she does seem yeah. very calm mm -hmm. for a debuting fighter. She's not panicking even when Melissa comes forward. She's staying in, she's throwing her shots, and she's still right there. You know, sometimes even that, that idea of a bait all you really want is somebody to attack. You may, let's say you do your best when you interrupt somebody else's attack. Well, then you leave openings. They'll attack, you'll interrupt them. Now she knows she can do it. She's standing mm -hmm. in there against a veteran opponent, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, Burrell's debut fight. This is the 10th for Karianis. Well, that's the other one. We're trying to look up information. Never mind amateur MMA. How many amateur kickboxing and Muay Thai bouts oh, are there boy. going on in small towns in Quebec that maybe she's fought in that we can't find online? Right, because this is not somebody fighting for the first time. This is somebody fighting professionally in a mixed martial arts fight for the first time. But if you look at Claudia, she's fought a lot. You can Absolutely. feel it. Yeah, she's way too calm for somebody yeah. that's just debuting flat out in mixed mm -hmm. martial arts. Sure, it's her first mixed martial arts fight, but it is not her first fight by any stretch. As she backed Karianis up that time, Karianis answered with a kick coming off the cage. And she's throwing uh, punches on different tangents now, coming from low and high on different angles, and then backing back out. So that's what she is trying to dictate this. Get in, strike two, maybe three times, maybe four. Get out, if you pursue, she'll land on the way out. So she's dictating that game right now. Just under 20 seconds left in the first round. They're pretending to, to go down to see if you can get a reaction. And so much of this fight has been about trying to bait reactions out mm -hmm. of their opponent. Oh, oh nice oh, exchange oh. up top. Forget baiting. That was yep. the full deal as they grapple and both land punches on the exit. So she beat her to that. That, that saying, you beat him to the punch. That's a metaphor we use in all types of things. But she literally did that. She felt uh, Melissa's left hand coming, and she right hand beat it to the chin. And then if you do beat that, your hand gets where it's going, and your shoulder ends up protecting you. As the, your hand reaches its target, your own shoulder and arm can catch.
now, 10 years later, they will be so experienced with the, the punching and somewhat to some degree the striking of all kinds that you might get a more accurate judge or you might get a more accu accurate score when the fight's on their feet. So in that one, I feel like Claudia won that round. I feel like she was able to get to her more and she dictated how it moved and when it, who was throwing when and who was landing when. I mean, if you're judging by damage, Claudia did the more damage yep. in that first round as Melissa's got a mouse underneath the eye. Oh, Claudia comes up top with a head kick off the back leg. And now throwing ooh, side kicks ooh. to the body. and A hard one from uh, Melissa coming in. Now Melissa's storming in a little bit. Those side kicks, when one retracted, Melissa threw a right hand and landed it. She's really looking to attack Beryl now as she came in with the left hand that missed, but the right hand found a home and now trying to walk her down and just follow up. So fighting at its best, and when, like, this fight, the way that these two are, are fighting with each other, moving with each other, the dynamic that they've created, is kind of an altered state of consciousness, altered perception of the world. You know, they're not hearing sound the way the rest of us are hearing it right now. They're not experiencing time the way we are. So what happens is they're in it now, so round two is much easier often than round one is. See how they're flowing, now they're fighting? Their, their mind and body are in a fight now. So it's easier to just go be in a fight, and that's why you're seeing them both open up, you're, and you're seeing Melissa do a lot better in round two. Yeah, it seems the more that Claudia has brought to her, it's almost woken Melissa up a bit. It's driven her on, and she's starting to win those exchanges. Yeah, and she, her vision is good now. Her, her focus is really good. She's stepping in and out. She's dictating then oh, there. She's responding. Hand. And that one stung Claudia, who's now on the bike. Excellent round right now for Melissa. Trying to walk Claudia down. Now she's gonna have enough time here to be able to get the senses back. Everything's gonna recenter mm -hmm. for her, but Melissa's still oh, pressing. She just took shin on knee, man. That what that hurts. This everything hurts. We haven't all the royal we who do this job, we haven't always done that great of a job of letting people see that. All every time a bone hits a bone, it hurts. Absolutely. It isn't just the things that score in video games, the knuckles to the to the liver or to the chin. All of that. Spinning back fist lands by Melissa. Melissa is going so step, step into shot, shot. And that's, there's the answer. With, you see Melissa, excellent work, then to the grab and then to the kick. Melissa's flowing beautifully right now. But watch, she's gonna step two times before she throws something, watch. Here it comes. What? Nope, now she's only stepping one time. So once you become predictable, she did it a lot, she then reset because of, well, I, I picked it up, Robin, as you were talking about it, and off the two-step, it was a feint, and then off the one-step she threw. Yeah. So she's mixing up the rhythm now. Yeah, she fell into a moment or two where she just did what felt good. Oh, oh spinning oh. back, this didn't land, and a straight right did from Claudia Burrell. And she's walking Melissa down. Melissa's staying right into that clinch. And it, la it landed unset, and with your, your vision not locked in, the old, it's not, it's the one you don't see. That one really rocked her. That's a tough one to take. Off balance, your vision just trying to reset, and somebody talking about stepping in. Two or three steps running in to throw that right hand, clobbered Melissa with it. That's a tough moment for Melissa here, Robin, because she was winning this round pretty convincingly. Now Claudia's put herself right back in the conversation. Yes, she has. Yes, she has. Whoever wins almost to the point that it can sway either way now. So you have to win these last minutes of this round if you're either of these ladies. And, of course, that makes it exciting. Melissa going right back to what was scoring for her earlier. She went for the inside leg kick. Claudia Burial answers with one of her own. Again, Claudia looking low inside. Minute. Yeah. Minute and a half left. There you see, your, what I'm talking about is you see her her body working into a step to do, there again. Oh, oh, oh. Claudia just missed that head kick. And, and there it is again. She's running in, that's why she got hit with the right hand. But it's also, and again with the right hand, but it's also what we say when we, we see a fighter's down, we say you gotta let it all go, you gotta just go for it. That's what we're talking about. The reason fighters sometimes don't do it is because you get hit coming in. To go for it is to just be reckless, and it's dangerous. It's dangerous to be reckless when you're there again, you see it. Oh, absolutely it is. As Melissa's been caught a couple times coming in. She's landed strikes on it, but she's taken just as good, if not better, than she's gotten. Whoa! Whoa. These two are really going for it. Claudia answers up high, going with the right hand. Melissa had one of her own ready for her. What you see when you do that slightly, and they're both landing spinning kicks and spinning attacks and spinning back fists. Melissa charged in as Claudia yep. went for that spinning back fist. It is dangerous to charge in. 
but it's also, you know, a demonstration of your grit. You know, how bad that idea that you want the victory so bad, you want to be successful with your with what you're doing, with what you're expressing, that you charge in. Melissa charges in that time, looking for the double leg. Claudia able to fight it off. They exchange right hands. Melissa had a kick right at the end of the round that's parried away, and we're through two rounds of great action in the women's strawweight division. And Robin, Claudia had round one. Yep. Melissa started off round two very well. That right hand slowed her down. Did she do enough to secure the round? Very, very difficult to say. If I was in her corner and, and they're talking to her now, we would say we absolutely need to put, keep doing this, turn it up. So when you see her doing those hard steps to kind of go charging in or blurting into the sentence, you, you can see that they're dangerous. You can see she's getting hit, but it's a reflection of, like I said, her desire to win. It's like, I, I feel like I'm not winning this round, so I gotta just, quote, try harder. I gotta grip the steering wheel harder. That's not always the answer, but it's admirable. It's a reflection of the, of the intense uh, desire for victory. This is the third and final round, this women's final matchup. Final five on the women's Mason side, Melissa Carianis against Claudia Burrell. And we've seen a tremendous back and forth battle again here tonight. Again, Robin, we go back to talking about Alex Caparici, Woodrow James, our matchmakers here for PFC. Every fight so far tonight has been so well put together. Yeah, beautifully so. And again, we try to expose any truths so that people know them. Um, and those are my friends. <laughs> so when I say they're brilliant matchmakers, I say that by, by acknowledging that truth. But that doesn't make it not true. These are brilliant, brilliant fights put together by two guys who take a lot of pride in the unique skill of identifying how to put the little puzzle pieces of skills and attributes and, and will and desire and history and team and all those things together to make these fights. And they've done it beautifully tonight. And of course, they can be both things, friends and that, tremendous that's right. matchmakers. That's right, which is why... Nice I, exchange of right hands. I think a lot in, in this podcast world we live in where people speak a little more outside of the realm of just talking like you're in television, you can put in truths like that. You can put in truths of these two fighters, where they come from. And this is just, you know, we're just here having fun. We're here watching. They're the ones doing the hard work. Absolutely. Look at these two. Look at what they've dedicated their life to to coming in here in these moments and showing their heart and their guts and their toughness. The rest of us, last night, uh, Joe Rogan and Cormier said we're professional fans. I mean, aren't we all? Look Absolutely. at this. Absolutely. Look, look at Great this. exchange again, both throwing right hands. They're throwing heavy here for round three. And again, Melissa being driven by will, right? If she were to pull back on some of that desire, she might see more clearly that being subtle or, or finding a different line might be the answer, but that's not who she is. Who she is is somebody who is driven by her passion, and she passionately wants to win these exchanges. That's why she's blurting her way in. Claudia trying to keep her on the outside with that kick. Melissa steps oh, in oh. and they exchange again. The bone across the sternum is a painful shot there that Melissa landed, and of course she ate two punches in the meantime. So, and we're talking about Melissa's desire, her heart, her passion to, to come in. Well, Claudia is doing exactly what you want to do against that. And that is slowly draw the energy out of her, counter her, land on her when she comes in, be the more clever fighter. Well, that time it was Claudia who came in with a Superman style punch and landed as Melissa tried to get the left through. Claudia reaching forward, Melissa able to step back out of the way. They both exchange again, left hands for each. She's. I, I, I think Melissa took some bad shot in and around the eye because she was touching it. And often when something feels out of the normal, that's when a fighter does that. So she was backed up and she was touching around her eye. If you get an injury to the bones around the eye, it's very shocking. Oh, so Taken down by Claudia and that was heavy. Yeah, and you saw how she's now performing slightly differently. Um, sometimes you have a physiological response to a shot and, uh, and something happened there for sure. Something happened to her for sure. Yeah, there, there's there's another mouse around the eye of Melissa Karianis, and I believe it's the opposite eye this time. Oh no, has that's it under. Yeah, no, the right eye. Now I don't know if you can see it. We can. It's, it's over the top yeah, of the eye. Yeah, and it's bad. And it's, Claudia's gone right yeah. back to it. Yeah, smart, smart. That's what she should be doing. But but and Melissa's gonna try to look for that arm. But but no, see how she's covering it up. When you take damage to the bones of the eye like that, you know this fighter wants to keep fighting. We've seen that, but. The ref is taking a peek here, and if it, you, if you get the right break, we bring the doctor in here. That's what we want. Um, yeah, it's 
the, the, our camera people will try their best to get in there and let you see it. But uh, it, yeah, we're in a spot where we're going to have to be careful here. Yeah, we also, you know, this is something. It's important that we don't affect what they hear here as well, right? They are directly in front of us, uh, and it's their fight, not our, not the audience's fight or our fight or anybody else's fight. It's their fight. So now they've gotten a little further away, but we can comment on that. I really admire Claudia doing what you need to do here. When you have an injured fighter, it is your responsibility to get this done. Uh, you know, the ref really needs to be in there. You can see he's focused she slid on it. her hand there under the go. throat, That's got done. to it, and it's he's over. Now, Rear naked choke submission yeah. win. Claudia so, Burrell's going to uh, start yeah. off her career 1-0. and all. Yeah, honestly, you see her covering that. that there's a real injury there, and uh, you want to credit her because most people stop there. Like, watch as they treat her right now. Most people, you'll see that swelling. If, the, if there's damage to the orbital bone and the area around it, you feel it immediately. It's not just a regular punch to the eye. It's not like, wow, that hurt. You can see the reaction is something to trauma there. So uh, let's credit her for fighting through what, honestly, I've seen hundreds of fighters not be able to continue right there. Yeah. And uh, because you could see it in her body language, you could see it in her physiological response. She's she's badly injured there, and she fought with a lot of heart. And the ref did his best to kind of keep an eye on it and see if there was a chance to either end the fight if need be or get the, the, the doctor in. And Claudia did the right thing. There was a last minute moment where Claudia pushed down on the back of her head after she won. That's just an instinctive, instinctual, visceral reaction sometimes to fighting. But, but uh, yeah, Melissa took a rough one there. I hope she's not, you know, she's not too down about losing a fight because that is, that's a damage. That's a damage to it. And she showed a lot of guts to, to keep fighting. Yeah, and th that's a very emotional fighter right now is Melissa Carianis. Claudia Burrill goes over to shake her hand and. Boy, it's, it's a tough one on the end. Uh, Melissa is, is a bit despondent at the moment. She's definitely upset with uh, what's happened on the end here as Robin Black is going to head into the cage. Didn't mean to take anything away at the end of the call from the rear naked choke submission victory from Claudia Burreal. She did a great job to pull that off, but it, it, it was, as Robin said, it was a tough moment because... Melissa obviously has something wrong with that eye, and we're gonna go back into the cage to Mr. Throwdown. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause, please, for both of the fighters in this cage. Your tap out came at three minutes, 58 seconds of the third round for your winner by rear naked choke submission, Claudia Baril. Claudia, congratulations, that was a very, very intense fight. I think you did, there was a shot that you landed on her to the eye, I think you did some real damage. Could you tell she was hurt? I think she, she's hurt, yeah, um, but she's very strong. Honestly, I thought I was, I was finished finish her with my punch, but yep. submission, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Yes, take it how you can get it, my friend. Now, this was your first professional MMA fight, correct? But you've had my, kickboxing. My first MMA fight. Your first MMA fight. How much kickboxing, yes, let's hear it for Claudia. How much kickboxing experience did you have coming in? Um, I have um, seven amateur kickboxing fight in uh, Muay Thai. And I have a lot of uh, boxing fight. But not a lot of love, but uh, maybe 12 or... And that's it. Well, congratulations, Claudia. It was an honor to, to commentate your fight. And now you are a professional mixed martial artist with a record of one win and no losses. Congratulations. Um, thank you for everyone here. You're a very nice uh, people. And uh, thank you for Prospect MMA, very professional league. And uh, I want to take, uh, I want to uh, merci mi coach, you know, John. And thank you for my family right there, my uh, parents. And um, I want to thank all my uh, sponsor on the, well, not there right now, but <laughs> thanks for my sponsor in uh, Quebec. And uh, of course, I, I, I want to uh, fight here again. Merci beaucoup. Claudia Barrio, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Claudia Barrio, pride of Drummondville, Quebec. She makes her professional mixed martial arts debut, as she said to Robin, her first MMA fight. 
obviously has some experience with combat sports as she mentioned to Robin, but in her first professional mixed martial arts fight, comes away with a rear naked choke submission victory over a 10 fight veteran in Melissa Carianis. That is a big victory for Claudia Burrell, and she says that she wants to return to PFC. Robin, I'd love to see Claudia Burrell come back.